Hi everybody, my name is Brady and I'm a 19th century American historian and we are back with another React video. And today we're going to be doing another epic rap battle of history. But before we get started, I just want to give a shout out to the newest channel member, uh, Michaela Pompey. I hope I'm saying your name correctly. Thank you for becoming a channel member. I want to give shout outs when you guys decide to support me because it means a whole lot. And if you want to become a channel member, there is a link in the description box below if there isn't already a join button next to the channel name. Uh, it should be there. There should be a join button, but sometimes it's not there, depending on what device you're on. And sometimes it just doesn't show up for some reason. I don't understand exactly how it works. All right, now that we're done with that, let's talk ERB. We got Kim Jong-il, who is a modern-ish political figure. And then we have Hulk Hogan. And weirdly enough, I'm here more for Hulk Hogan. I know I have the social studies bend to my channel, but I'm here for the pro wrestling stuff. This is an interesting matchup too. Hulk Hogan is this American stereotype and Kim Jong-il would villainize that sort of American stereotype. And then Kim Jong-il lived his life as kind of an exaggerated version of himself, building legends around himself. So that's kind of the cartoonish foreign supervillain that Hulk Hogan would be fighting in the ring. He fought the Iron Sheik, he fought Nikolai Volkov. In this case, this is just another cartoonish foreign villain. This just happens to be a real life one who actually was in charge of a country. So. It, it kind of works here. I'm, of course, leaning in Hogan's direction, even though, although I'm a huge wrestling fan, I was never the biggest Hulk Hogan fan, but he's representing wrestling here, so I, I'm with him here. I'm, I'm excited for this one. This should be fun. All right, let's get started. <laughs> Can I just, uh... Oh, God. These season one... I, I know this is like a re-edit of an old battle, but these season one outfits, they were different. But I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing. Uh, I'm not going to make fun of them for using a muscle suit because it's really funny. <laughs> that is actually really hilarious. So that's fine with me, man. <laughs> I love nice Peter here because he's he's doing the the arm thing like he's ready to go for a lockup. It's the typical start of a wrestling match. You lock up with your opponent, so that's a whole lot of fun. Um, Kim Jong Il is not saying anything necessarily wrong. I don't know Hulk Hogan's preferred uh, delivery method for steroids. I'd imagine. It's not through pills, nor through like shots in the arm. It's it's probably more likely it was in the butt. You give him a shot in the butt. And that that seems to be how a, a, a lot of athletes do it because you're not always getting your butt checked. If you if you shoot it into the arm, you, there, there will sometimes be signs that you were shooting it into the arm. So people will put it in their butt. <laughs> oh God. Ooh, I like the Asian Ric Flair line, even though I don't know how much that hits Hulk Hogan. I'm sure in his own head, that just is confirmation to Hulk Hogan. Oh, so I'm better than you. I, I, I don't know why. Hogan's got a big head. Um, but Ric Flair was very technical. And I, I'd say, like, I'm coming at you lyrically technical and stuff like that. And that that is something there. Okay. Um, Hogan's family. I'm sure we're going to get a little bit more into that. They had a TV show I watched when I was younger. It's called uh, Hogan Knows Best. It, it's just garbage reality TV. And, and they were not very likable. <laughs> Sonic the Hedgehog, mother, you're... 
Does Sonic the Hedgehog have a mother? I have a feeling I have come to the wrong place. I'm just gonna go back to the battle. Ooh, that's a good one. And that's one of those lines where Kim Jong-il, I, I keep almost saying Kim Jong-un because I've gotten used to saying Kim Jong-un. Uh, Kim Jong-il uh, could use the alimony thing against Hogan, but he's diffused it. No, I already said it. Now you can't use it against me. Hogan was apparently really bad about his alimony payments, and that went yeah, that came back to haunt him later on. If you don't know anything about Hulk Hogan in more recent years, he had this big lawsuit with Gawker who published a sex tape of Hulk Hogan and he ends up suing them and getting a whole bunch of money. But now because he was such a deadbeat when it came to his alimony payments and we can talk about whether or not he should have had to pay as much as he did. But because of that, his wife was able to take a huge chunk of that. And don't feel too bad for the guy because he made like a hundred million dollars or something out of that. So he'll be fine. If Hogan runs out of money, it's his fault. But still. Come on, dude. All the little holsters know. I'll hang you from the ropes like a South Park puppet show. I'll chill cold you hostage like Laura Ling. Brother, I'll leg drop your ass back to Beijing. <laughs> Oh, God. Uh, Hogan was, he represented, in a lot of ways, American ignorance. He really played into American ig ignorance because he fought all of these stereotypes early on. And it, it really rewarded Americans who did not want to look at the foreigner for who they are. He wanted to look at them for where they are from. Um... That's one of those things when you go back and watch like 80s and 70s wrestling. Sometimes I look at it and I'm like, why is this guy the good guy? There was this one point where like Hacksaw Jim Duggan, who was this guy who carried around an American flag and a 2 by 4 he like lost a match. And then right after, while the guy's celebrating, uh, he just beats him up. And I'm just thinking... Why are you doing that? He won the match. Aren't you supposed to be the good guy? Uh, same thing happened with uh, Sergeant Slaughter, like the Iron Sheik. I remember him, the Iron Sheik, winning a battle royal. And then Sergeant Slaughter's this big American soldier guy who comes back in the ring and chokes out the Iron Sheik, who didn't cheat. I don't believe he cheated in that match, which, which was unlike the Iron Sheik, but he, he just did it. And he got away with it because he, he was the American guy. And it, it was really, it's really funny to watch in hindsight. Uh, probably not for the reasons they would want it to be. I'm sure she did. Um, she has nothing really nice to say about her husband. I, I heard her in a recent documentary, and uh, she's, yeah, she, she'll talk uh, casual crap about Hogan. So using her against him. Well, ex-wife, right? Does he have a current wife? I don't, I don't, his ex-wife. Uh, I don't know if they were married when, no, no. Because they, they weren't married at this point. So he's probably referring to his ex-wife here, not his wife. But it fits more into the line, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Hulk Hogan goes down. I don't know if he can finish the battle. He, he's reaching for the ropes. It's, 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 it's. Oh, yeah. The cream of the crop, it rises to the top. Oh yeah, Macho Man. I can't do his voice very well or long because it hurts. But dude, Macho Man. I, this this is my dude. This is my dude. I wasn't a Hogan guy. Um, I was a little young to be a Hogan guy or a Macho Man guy in their prime. But looking back on it now, oh, I, I'm I'm totally a Macho Man guy. He, he was great. Oh, yeah, it's 
Okay, yeah, if you've not seen the Macho Man Randy Savage Slim Jim commercials, you gotta check them out, man. Fun thing about those, uh, WWF, when they were uh, feuding with World Championship Wrestling, they were like the two big companies at the time, Macho Man jumped over from WWF to WCW. And that was a big deal because it, it was like a huge defection. But what was a real big deal about that, he brought his Slim Jim endorsement with him. That was even bigger, um, it, it, possibly. Like financially, that's huge, bringing that over with him. Uh, ha having this guy who was so identified with Slim Jim and the WWF taking the Slim Jim brand over to WCW. I, I thought that was an element that was never explored enough because I, I thought that was uh, really cool. I don't like dead little bitches with glasses, but when midget step up, I stall the midget asses. My Ooh. Show, man, there is no equal, so spend less time rapping and start feeding with me. Oh, I'll elbow drop your whole nation on behalf of the entire world wrestling federation. Honestly, I still think Kim Jong-il might have won. Um, I really enjoyed the Macho Man impression. The Hulk Hogan thing, the alimony line was funny, but he was kind of a self-diss more than anything, and it kind of took ammo away from Kim Jong-il. Uh, I really enjoyed the Macho Man stuff very much, but he didn't really hit him very hard, and that was a really short verse. Um, yeah, but it, it, that was fun. That was a really fun one. I love when I get opportunities to talk about wrestling. The short amount of time that I spent as a cameraman in pro wrestling was one of the most interesting times of my life. You could only imagine what kind of people you get to meet then. Uh, I got to meet people from all around the world. Uh, some of them I wasn't able to communicate because I, there were language barriers or whatever, but they get in the ring and somehow they're able to work with people whose language they don't speak. It, it, wrestling really is such a universal language. It's kind of really cool. And I've always been into like that carny element. Uh, I guess that's why I like magicians as well. All of it, it it's very carny. And that sort of stuff is really uh, entertaining to me. I, I don't know. Uh, when the pandemic is over, the first thing I want to do is go to a local wrestling show um, uh, at the old place I used to work. I, I, I really would love to do that. That, that It's on my list. We're, I'm going to make it happen. The second I get uh, vaccinated and everything's okay, that's the first thing I want to do. And I, I'm, I'm hyped. I'm hyped about that. It, it gives me something to look forward to. So... I hope you all enjoyed this video. I know it's not my typical social study stuff, but uh, this is one that I really wanted to do. And I'm probably going to be doing a lot more of the other ERB videos just kind of for funsies. They'll often be accompanied by another social studies related video that day. These will be more like, if they don't have social studies figures in them, they'll probably be like a bonus video alongside a video that's more related to the stuff I do. And uh, that's about it. I've rambled on long enough. Thank you all for watching. I will see you guys next time. All right.